So with these ECUs getting up in age, uh, some folks are starting to notice uh, having drivability problems that can be attributed directly to these computers. So I wanted to make a video showing some of the quick things that you can check if you suspect your ECU is bad. So we're going to focus on the A9L. This is an A9L spare that I have. Uh, but this would also apply to the other mass air computers. Um, there's other codes, A9P, I believe A9T. This might apply to the 8LD, I believe it is, which was a 1988 mass air computer. Um, really quick, you can tell if you have a mass air computer by this code up here. Uh, EEC4, SFI, sequential fuel injection, MA, mass air. If this was a speed density ECU, it would say SD. Um, if this was a batch fire ECU, this would say EFI. But this is a sequential fuel injection mass air A9L, as we all know. Uh, but there's basically a few things that can go wrong with these. Um, so we're going to just do a couple checks. Um, we're going to look at the 5 volt reference voltage that the CCU outputs that runs a lot of sensor sensors. Uh, we'll also take a look at the pin 46 trace that tends to burn up. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the capacitors. So I have opened this computer up and taken a peek before making this video. I do have two bad capacitors. And then I will kind of explore where the transistor is located that runs the fuel pump. Uh, continuous running fuel pump is an issue that happens sometimes. And there's a specific transistor in here that it likes to short out. And I'll go over where to find that and if so you can possibly replace it. This is not a how-to video. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to perform the repairs. I'm just going to kind of explain certain things. And then you'll be able to take it from there. There's a lot of inf information on the internet and such regarding these repairs. Um, but first, since I imagine most of you will have your ECU in the car... I want to show how to measure your 5 volt reference voltage. Now the first thing you want to check with the car still hooked up, with the ECU still in the car, is you want to check your 5 volt reference. Now this runs a number of sensors. Um, the easiest place to check it on the car would be at the TPS sensor because, because of accessibility. It's right up top, your connector is back here, you have three wires. You have your ground, your sensor ground, sorry, that would be pin 46 you have your 5 volt signal voltage, which is pin 26, and then you have a return wire, which is what the ECU takes as its reading. The two wires you want here are the orange pin 26 5 volt reference and the black pin 46 uh, sensor ground. Now, this is just the most convenient spot to take that voltage reading, but in case you have a problem here, you're going to want to continue down the line to verify that it's not a wiring problem. The best place to do that, obviously, is down at the computer, the 60-pin connector. But it could also point to your 10-pin connectors having a very uh, poor connection. Uh, those are your salt and pepper shakers that are located typically back here. Uh, those, those connections run your TPS, your IAC motor, your IAC. Uh, they also have the signals from your coolant temperature and your air charge temperature sensor going to the ECU through there. So if those connections are messed up, it can cause a lot of problems. So if you don't have your five volts here at the TPS, I would check at your 10 pins and then down at your ECU before proceeding and, and assuming that the regulator in the ECU is bad. So with the TPS sensor disconnected, you're gonna have your plug on the harness here. The wires that you wanna probe are going to be your orange and your black wire here. And you're gonna to have to, it's gonna be a little tricky to reach in there with the multimeter leads and touch those. You can also try and back probe them, but you may have to get in there pretty deep. All right, so it's a little tricky to do. Ah, I lost it. Um, it's, it's a little tricky holding the multimeter and the pins, but as you saw when I started the video that I had five volts and it was holding pretty steady. Now what you wanna see is it holds five volts. I forget the range. I think it's like 4.7 to 5.1 with the, with the car running. Obviously I don't have the car running here. Um, but you want to see, you want to avoid fluctuations where the voltage is going up and down, and you want to avoid um, seeing something other than 5 volts, like 3 volts or 2 volts. That would indicate you have a problem. Now, you don't necessarily have a problem here. What you should do if you do not have 5 volts is check down at the ECU connector. If you have the 5 volts at the ECU, I strongly suggest you check your 10-pin connectors to make sure those are in good shape and clean and making a good connection. All right, so you've checked for your 5 volts. Now you have the ECU out of the car. 
the first thing I would check here to see if you have continuity from pin 46 to pin 40 and 60. Now, if you notice, this connector has various numbers here. Actually, this is upside down, but this is 41 and 60. And if you flip it around, you'll see 1 through 10 and 11 through 20. So what that means is that your first row here closest to you would be pin 1 through 10, 11 through 20. This would be then pin 21 through 30 and 31 through 40. This would be 41 through 50 and then 51 through 60. So the pins you want to test are pin 40 and 60, which are these two in the corner. And then pin 46, which is your sixth pin over on the top. You're going to set your meter to continuity, which if you... All right, so I switched to a different meter just to kind of help me out here. This one has a clamp on pin 40. Um, continuity, again, it's the symbol that looks like sound waves. Um, so when you, when you actually have continuity, you'll hear a meter make a sound and may display low resistance indicating that the circuits are one and the same. This is me touching the two probes together. Um, so anyway, the clamp is on pin 40. And like I said before, pin 46 would be your sixth pin over. One, two, three, four, five, six on the top row. And as you can see, when I touched them, it rings. So in this case, this computer does have continuity between pin 46 and 40. Now you also want to check 60. Um, these two are ground, and pin 46 is sort of a filtered ground. Um, but you should still ring continuity through. Now if you don't have it here, that's a good sign that your pin 46 trace is burned up. You'll need to open the ECU up. Okay, so opening the ECU is pretty easy. You've got four screws here. These are T15 Torx screws. And then you're going to have two more in these corners here. Now, these are T8 Torx screws. Now, if your ECU has never been opened, you're going to need to slice this warranty label here. After that, this top cover will come right off. So with the top cover off, you can inspect the three capacitors. Now, these are a very common issue on these uh, A9Ls and other Mustang ECUs. So I'm going to zoom in real quick and show you this particular capacitor. You notice the lead on the left-hand side is a little bit corroded. Um, but then there's this capacitor here. It's a little tricky to see, but this one's actually oozing. Um, the, the leads are okay, but this one's physically oozing a black uh, liquid. Uh, this other one in the back seems to be okay, uh, but I'm going to replace all three of them. Um, so these are located, again, just for reference, these little blue-green cylinders right here. One, two, and three. Now there's a lot of how-to videos on how to do this on YouTube, so I'm not going to go into it. But basically, if you've made it this far and you're comfortable with uh, component level work, you're going to flip the board over, desolder these, uh, replace them with uh, similar capacitors, and just solder them in. It's a pretty simple repair. Okay, so once you've inspected your cap capacitors, you're going to unscrew the board from the back plate and flip it over. Uh, to do that requires removing one, two, three, four, five, six screws. And then if you were to flip the unit over, there's an additional four screws here. These are all T15 screws, uh, Torx style screws. Once you've done that, you can actually lift the ECU out of the plate and flip it over and kind of use it as a way to hold it again by inserting it. It'll actually support it. Uh, but that'll give you a clear view of the bottom of this. And I'm gonna go over how to locate your pin 46 trace. So once you have your ECU board flipped over like so, you can locate your pin 46 trace by coming in and looking for this group of three surface mount resistors. You can also count six pins over on the top from your 60 pin connector. So this would be pin 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. Now pin 46, the trace is this particular trace right here that runs up and connects to this solder point here. So you're running from your actual 60 pin connector here up to this solder point here. This solder point here is a resistor on the backside. It goes from here to here, 
And then the trace actually continues down this way, down to another resistor here and a point there. Uh, but where it tends to burn up is right in this area here. You'll notice that this one is a nice green color. When it burns, it tends to be a nice black, dark color that's pretty noticeable. Now the repair here, if this were to be burned, is to solder a jumper from this point here to this point here. That's how you would perform a repair of your pin 46 trace. All right, so back with the ECU flipped over the correct way in the case, I'm gonna go over some of these components that I've identified here. Um, specifically the transistors, there are 15 of them and they do each do different functions here. Um, so you'll notice on each side, there's a large heat sink with a bank of five transistors on each side, five here, five there. Um, they do normally have these particular spring clamps here. These clamps clip over the end and help hold it against that. I've removed it on some of them just to identify these transistors. Um, but I'm going to go over this bank first. See if I can get a good view of what these are. So from left to right, this is your IAC. This is pin 21. This is your number 5 injector, pin 14. This is your number 4 injector, pin 13. This is your number 3 injector, pin 12. And this is your number seven injector, pin 42. So now we are on the other side, uh, with your 60 pin connector being off to your right. And from left to right, this is your pin 26 five volt VREF transistor. This is pin 15, this is your number six injector. Pin 59, this is your number two injector. Pin 58, this is your number one injector and pin 52, this is your number eight injector. So now in the center of the board, you have five transistors that are not using a heat sink. Uh, I'm gonna orient the connector to my right to try and identify them for you. So this one here is pin 32. This is your secondary air injection. This is your diverter valve on your uh, air injection tube setup. This one here, is your pin 38. This is your air bypass on your smog pump, your air injection setup. This one here is pin 17. This is your STO, uh, your check engine light. This one here is pin 33. This is your EGR solenoid. And this one here in the front is pin 22. This is your fuel pump. I'm gonna go into a little more detail on this one right here. Okay, so your fuel pump transistor is this one right here. Now, oftentimes with these ECUs, when they fail, they, the fuel pump tends to run continuously. Now, sometimes the capacitors fix that, but usually what that means is your transistor here is actually shorted. Um, there's actually two ways for it to fail. One is that the associated resistors um, short open. In that case, the fuel pump does not run. Uh, I, unfortunately, I have not located those particular two resistors on the board yet, so I can't show you that. But oftentimes, the most common failure is that the fuel pump shorts, uh, the, sorry, the transistor shorts, and shorts in a state that the fuel pump constantly runs. In that case, this here may be actually your, your potential suspect and should be replaced out. Now, one thing I didn't really go over is how to actually check your resistors to the pins. I called out the pins and the way that I checked them was to take my multimeter and touch the center pin of the three on the transistors to the associated pin on the 60 pin connector. That's how I was confirming that the transistors operated a particular circuit. All right, so in closing, I hope that some of these little checks that I've shown in this video do help you out in determining if your ECU is, has failed. Um, some of you may also be able to perform your repairs based on what I've shown. Now the capacitors is a pretty common repair. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do that, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, this particular A9L, the only fault that it seems to have is the two capacitors are bad. So I'm going to replace those and then that's going to be it for this ECU. I'm going to seal it back up and, and put it back on my shelf as a spare. Now, one fault that I do want to see if I can try to repair is the constantly running fuel pump. And again, I suspect that to be this transistor here. Uh, unfortunately, getting your hands on broken A9Ls is tricky these days. 
as um, repaired ones seem to sell for pretty good money. So unless I can get my hands on an ECU with that exact failure, I don't think I'm going to be able to perform a repair and, and put a video together for that. Uh, but we'll see what I can do. There is a company on eBay, I'm sure most of you watching this are aware of it, ECU Exchange, that will repair your ECU for a fee. Uh, many, many folks have used them with good, luck, with good success, so recommend them if you need your ECU repaired. Um, but if you're skilled enough to try and attempt some of these repairs yourself, I hope this video helps you out in, in some way. Anyway, thank you for watching.